While I was listening to my Chinese podcast at the gym the other day, I made a connection between two seemingly totally unrelated fields, bodybuilding and language learning, that has doubled my progress with Chinese almost instantly. And if you stay until the end of this video, I'm sure that you'll increase the results you gain from your time learning any language by a lot with very little extra effort. For many of you, actually, this may even lead to a paradigm shift that improves how you learn anything for the rest of your life. Now, first, let me introduce the star of today's video, Mr. Mike Mensa. Mike won both Mr. Universe and a heavyweight title for Mr. Olympia while only training 30 minutes a day, four times a week. And this is incredible. Just to put in perspective how incredible that is, almost all pro bodybuilders then and now train two to four hours a day, six to seven days a week. Mike also personally trained six-time Mr. Olympia winner, Dorian Yates. And he wasn't just your average meathead either. Mensa studied genetics, physical chemistry, and organic chemistry, and he was a master of working smart. As I learned more about him and his approach to bodybuilding, I noticed four major characteristics of his approach that I realized can be applied to language acquisition to massively increase efficiency. Here's the first one. Mike had a deep understanding of the science. So he often commented that most people trying to build muscle get a lot of things wrong. They do too many sets, they work out too often, and they rest too little between workouts, which leads to overtraining, which hurts muscle growth. And when they do work out, they don't push their muscles to absolute failure, which really is the only way to stimulate growth, in his opinion. Mensa also said that people eat way more than they need to to gain muscle, and the body can only really absorb a certain amount of nutrients to grow a certain amount of muscle in a certain amount of time and consuming more than the body can take is just kind of pointless. Overall, Mike was adamant that so many people working out in the gym were just wasting time due to a lack of understanding of biology and chemistry. In the same vein, most people learning languages don't know how the brain actually acquires language. They work really hard, but not so smart. This was me, by the way. When I started out with Chinese, I spent hours a week doing things that I later found out were an extremely, extremely inefficient use of my time. Traveling to classes, working through boring textbooks, spending time studying grammar and learning about Chinese, sometimes in English. I memorized thousands of words out of context, so I had no idea how to actually use them, and I didn't even consider learning how to read until a year into my study. I, like many learners, was totally unaware of the vital importance of comprehensible input in language acquisition and the simple three-step framework for rapid acquisition that we later called Build, Get, Activate. Here's a quick breakdown in case you haven't heard of it before. Step one, build a foundational understanding of pronunciation and reading immediately, including the most common 1,000 to maybe 1,500 words. For Chinese specifically, you'll also need to get to work learning the most common 3,000 characters, but at least the first 500 to 1,000 or so before you can move on to stage two. This foundation, gives you the ability to understand sentences and it's kind of like knowing how to do each weight exercise effectively and how to eat right and how to rest appropriately. So once you've got this down, you can start stage two. Get understandable messages by immersing in the language you're learning. So this means essentially just watch, listen and read a lot. This stage is by far the most important and is the equivalent of having the correct diet and recovery so your body can actually build muscle. And it's where the vast majority of your progress is made. So once you build a foundation in the language and you're getting the right nutrition, you can move on to the final stage and start enjoying the fruits of your labor, which is activate. Activate what you understand primarily through producing the language, i.e. speaking and writing. So this step is just like doing a high quality workout where you actually push your muscles to the limit appropriately. So you can develop some level of fluency without this activation stage, purely relying on stages one and two, the foundation building and immersion stages, but you'll never really become an awesome fluent speaker without speaking practice. Just like you can purely learn about diet and get in decent shape with just some maybe light jogging or long walks every now and then, but you'll never get big and strong that way. So these three steps are all you'll need for insane progress in any language, so do not waste your time and energy doing anything else. For a more detailed guide on exactly what is required at each of these steps for Chinese specifically, you can check out this video right here. Now the second key principle that connects bodybuilding with language learning is the crucial concept of focus and intensity. 
Basically, the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. Although I've been lifting weights regularly in some form for around eight years, as you can see, I've never developed big muscles, even though I always kind of wanted to, to be honest. After watching Mensa's videos though, I realized that I've always just been kind of going through the motions when it came to my workouts. I never hired a professional trainer to help me master the various exercises with proper form. I never dove deep into nutrition really. I just made sure that I was doing each exercise pretty much correctly without hurting myself and made sure I was tired afterwards. And then I'd go home and I'd get back to work without any thought about my diet. Recently though, for the first time in my life, I've actually started counting calories and the grams of protein I consume each day. And I realized very quickly that I was not eating enough consistently to see the muscle growth I wanted, especially as I have a naturally fast metabolism. So my biggest progress killer though, was that I very rarely did what might cause HIT or high intensity training. I'd always stop just short of failure before the exercise really became painful and uncomfortable, avoiding that last one or two vital reps that actually stimulate the muscle growth. I also never used what bodybuilders call mind-muscle connection, where you focus on working each muscle consciously. I also did my reps way too fast, just trying to kind of get to the end of the set. I wasn't focusing on that time under tension technique, actually going through the rather unpleasant feeling of slowing down each rep so the muscle is strained for longer and it's actually damaged so it can grow. So how do all these mistakes in my exercise regime relate to learning languages? Well, don't worry, I'm not about to suggest that you immerse to the point of failure. Oh, I'm immersing in Chinese, oh, my brain hurts. No, no, nothing like that. Let me just give you some examples to explain what I mean because this is really important. So over the past 18 months or so, I've roughly immersed in Chinese actively, as in with 100% focus, for around 700 hours, maybe 800 hours tops. So that's two hours a day on average. And these last six months or so, to be honest, been so busy, I've managed to maybe squeeze in an hour or so. This is either listening to podcasts, watching TV, movies, and YouTube videos, or engaging in conversation with native speakers. So I've known for a long time that the best way to immerse efficiently is by making flashcards of any new words or phrases. But I never did this while immersing because I'm too busy to sit at a computer and use something like Magaku, which is my personal favorite flashcard creator. I actually immerse in Chinese throughout the day almost exclusively using my phone. And while doing other tasks like walking my dogs or household chores, for a long time, because making the best flashcards with audio and images wasn't convenient for me, I instead opted not to make any flashcards at all for a very long time. Instead, when I saw or heard a word or phrase that I wanted to learn during my immersion, I might just maybe repeat the word aloud a few times and hope it would come up again soon so I'll be able to actually remember it long term. Unfortunately though, when you only have an hour or two maximum each day, this approach is pretty inefficient as you just can't immerse enough to guarantee that you'll see the words often enough to commit them to memory. Now, however, Thanks to the inspiration I got from Mike and his obsession with focus and intensity, whenever a new word or cool phrase comes up that I want to learn while immersing on my phone, I simply take a screenshot, edit it to make it a little bit smaller and paste it into a flashcard right then and there. And you can do exactly the same thing with books or comics and it works like a charm. Sure, there's no audio, but you've got visual context and once you have a pretty solid grasp of pronunciation and listening like I do, well, it's not really essential to have audio in your flashcards anymore. It's just a nice bonus. So another example of me just going through the motions when learning Chinese is with my shadowing practice. So I aim to do shadowing for 15 minutes every day. And I've kept up with it pretty well, as you can see here. Shadowing is where you listen to a piece of audio you enjoy and you speak along with it. So far, I've put in around 80 hours in the last nine or 10 months. And before, I would often allow my mind to sort of drift off while speaking along with the audio, not really taking in the content I was listening to that much. But thanks to my new understanding of muscle growth and that mind-muscle connection thingy, I now try to focus fully during those 15 minutes and actively listen to the content as I shadow it. Maybe even rewinding certain interesting parts a few times, sometimes maybe even typing out the phrase into my flashcards and making a flashcard right then and there. Now the extra effort involved in these two examples I've just laid out for you probably amounts to no more than extra 10% of energy and focus. And as a result, 
I've probably gained at least 100% better results out of the time I've put in, maybe more. Just like focusing on the muscle you're using in the gym and pushing for that extra vital rep or two at the end makes so much difference, pushing yourself just that little bit harder in your language study can and will lead to disproportionately huge results. So here are some things that you can start doing today, right now, to get these kinds of results. First, try to stay in the present moment when you're immersing or practicing speaking and try to avoid drifting off thinking about other things. Meditation is a great practice that can help develop this skill. Next, make more flashcards, however you can, wherever you can, even if that's just typing the word or phrase into a flashcard field and hitting save. During your speaking practice, get a little bit more personal share your thoughts and feelings and ask more questions about your tutor or language exchange partner to create more meaningful interactions. Try spending an extra five minutes exploring new immersion content you might like each day. This next one's really important. Save words in your dictionary for later, sure, but actually spend some time before bed making them into flashcards that you will review the next day, instead of just adding to the already huge pile of saved words that you're inevitably going to just forget about. If you have a dictionary or a website you know that provides example sentences, just copy and paste it into a flashcard. It's way better to do this than just having an individual word. And remember, even if the sentence isn't perfect, any sentence is better than none. So if you do follow those tips, and put in that extra 10% focus, you will see some incredible results over the next few weeks and months, I promise. Now I want to share two more key connections that I made between Mike Mentz's bodybuilding approach and your language study. Apply these and your enjoyment of the process and your results will skyrocket even further. The number three is to switch up your routine every four to six weeks to avoid plateaus. Mensa advocated for the concept of muscle confusion. So he believed that the body is highly adaptable and can quickly get used to a specific training routine. As a result, the initial gains achieved from a workout program may diminish over time. And Mike was all about switching routines and keeping the muscles guessing so that growth could always be stimulated. He'd mix up exercises, use different rest intervals, different intensity techniques such as drop sets, supersets. And I've found the same to be true of language acquisition. So if you're building, getting and activating each day, your level will improve pretty quickly and you'll need to keep challenging your brain with different speaking exercises and new types of input. <sighs> My input, Stephanie, my. So the key here is just try not to get too comfortable. Maybe you're at the level where you can just about understand Peppa Pig episodes with subtitles in your target language. Why don't you try switching randomly to just a full podcast or try watching a TV show made for adults with subtitles to keep your muscles guessing. Buy a book you like, translate it into your target language and try to read it every now and then. Instead of just shadowing, try booking a speaking session with a tutor or maybe writing a journal in your target language. So here's a quick graph of all the different forms of media you can use to immerse arranged by difficulty, which you can take a screenshot of if you like. Notice that the more audio based a form of input is, generally the more difficult it is. Oh, and don't just vary based on difficulty, switch up what you're doing just to keep things fresh. Even if you're following the correct build, get, activate approach and doing everything right, you are human and you need variety and novelty. So the first stage build has kind of less flexibility with this because you must learn pronunciation and you must learn how to read. For Chinese specifically, you must learn those pesky characters and you'll spend more time in this stage than with other languages. By the way, if you are learning Chinese right now and you would like to get through the build, get and activate stages much more efficiently while actually having fun, then you should really consider checking out our series of courses, The Blueprint. There's also a free webinar below if you'd like to check that out and you can learn more about everything there. Now, when it comes to immersion and activation, you have far more flexibility. So for example, with immersion, I will personally listen to a single podcast every day for six weeks and then suddenly stop listening to podcasts entirely and instead listen to downloaded audio of a TV show about lawyers in Shanghai and then after a week or so move on to a Japanese detective cartoon I found with a Mandarin dub then three weeks later I'll become obsessed with the slow paced talk show I found on YouTube then I might cycle back to another podcast I was following a few months before and start listening to it again from the first episode just to see how my understanding of it has improved now for activation I might spend one or even two hours a day with italki tutors five 
five days a week. And then I'll move entirely onto talking to myself for a week or two, experimenting with that, and then focus more heavily on shadowing. Then I might stop speaking almost entirely for a few days and just write instead. So the key to all this is to follow your emotions and make sure that you have a wide variety of media and activities in your arsenal so that when you do inevitably get that ugh feeling, when you go to open your phone or computer and start studying, you can easily switch things up immediately with little effort. So here's one last principle I wanna share with you about Mike's bodybuilding routine that actually is three closely related, highly impactful ideas mixed into one. And those are set realistic goals, track your progress and celebrate your successes. So did you know that the average human can only gain eight to 15 pounds of muscle per year? Sure, I mean, if you're a celebrity with a personal trainer, nutritionist and a steroid supplier, you can increase that by quite a bit. But generally, at a certain point, your progress is limited by natural law. In a similar way, your brain can only build so many connections in a certain amount of time. And while you will eventually understand and produce a language easily, after enough exposure and speaking practice, your brain will get there in its own sweet time. In light of this, I think it's a good idea to set realistic daily goals and make sure that you enjoy what you're doing and don't concern yourself so much about reaching a certain level of fluency within a certain time. Have a long-term goal in mind, sure, such as passing an exam or achieving B2 fluency, but know that the habits you perform day to day are what will get you there. To quote Atomic Habits, forget about goals and focus on systems instead. So for an example, here's my recommended habit list for a beginner Chinese learner with 90 minutes per day to invest. Daily goals might include reviewing flashcards for 30 minutes, learning five characters for 10 minutes, spend another 10 minutes learning five words, then immerse and make flashcards for half an hour, then shadow for five minutes and write a journal entry for five minutes. Weekly goals might include have two 45 minute speaking sessions, review habit progress and adjust your goals for five minutes, and then research new immersion content for 15 minutes. If you maintain habits like these, you will eventually become fluent. So focus on completing those each day or week and switch things up where you can to keep things fun and challenging. Make sure to use some sort of journal or even a habit tracking app like I use to track your progress with your daily goals and your weekly goals. Give yourself rewards for even small achievements and make sure that you celebrate any milestones you create for yourself. Now with my habit tracking app, I can do a quick review of the day, the week, the month, and even the year to see where I've improved or where I need work. Now I don't journal, but I probably should as that would give me an even deeper insight into any improvements I make. And as for awards and celebrations, this is incredibly important. As someone who's particularly hard on myself, it's something I don't do nearly enough of. Did you finish your study-related tasks for the day? You deserve a walk in the park, my friend, or maybe a tasty snack of some kind, or a 45-minute episode of your favorite native language TV series. Found a tutor you really like? invest in $50 worth of tutoring sessions. Just had your first smooth conversation in your target language? Well, maybe it's time for a weekend trip away somewhere. Plan out these rewards so that you have something to look forward to and make sure to give yourself a pat on the back whenever any obvious progress is made. Finally, here's a bonus section that's very important to add before you go get started on your now much faster part of fluency. I want to mention two very important differences between bodybuilding and acquiring language as it's a great analogy, I'm a fan of it, but it's not perfect and there are some important things to consider here. So the first is intensity. Intensity is far more complicated with language learning. So while muscle growth only really occurs when you push yourself to failure and recover from physical damage, your brain doesn't get better after being damaged and you only improve at a skill at all through focused practice. So I remember Mandarin Blueprint co-founder Phil talking about the movie Whiplash. Phil is a jazz drummer, and I remember him saying that while Whiplash was really fun to watch, it massively oversimplifies the process of becoming a great drummer. It's not about pushing yourself to the physical limits, causing blisters and needing ice baths. No, no, no. In fact, if you ever find yourself not looking forward to or not enjoying your language study routine for any extended period of time, you need to switch things up immediately. The ability to immerse and practice speaking or writing with focus and regularity is what leads to results. And the more you enjoy consuming the content 
or chatting with your speaking partners, the easier it will be to stay consistent and the more progress you will make in a shorter amount of time. The term no pain, no gain, thankfully, does not apply to us language learners. Now, the other important point I wanted to mention is that of volume and rest. So it's a common myth that the brain is a muscle. Well, it isn't. It's a huge collection of neurons, a big meat computer that is literally built to acquire language rapidly when it gets the right stimulus. Getting enough rest and recovery is important for language acquisition, sure, but generally your brain can handle a lot more than your muscles. It can recover way faster, and unlike with bodybuilding, you should increase intensity or difficulty and volume of immersion and speaking as you advance in level, not decrease. Whereas with bodybuilding, you should decrease your workouts and rest more as you advance, otherwise you risk overtraining. This is especially true of immersion, by the way, as it's a more passive activity, and you can do it for six, even eight hours per day if you want, and get amazing results. Speaking and writing, however, because they are more active and require more focus, they can be exhausting, and genuinely, they feel like a workout. And I feel like there might be a point of diminishing returns after say an hour or so per day of speaking practice. So there you have it guys, that's my comparison between bodybuilding and language acquisition. I hope you found this useful and if you'd like to learn more about how to take Chinese specifically to a high level and make the process easy and fun, please check out this video right here for the full guide.